Hey everybody, welcome back to Fun Size VO. I am one of your hosts, PM Seymour. No, 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 you, you can't just ignore the fact that you started off that episode first talking like, Hi everybody, yeah. welcome to <laughs> Fun Size VO. What are you VO. talking about? Right? Are you doing that? <laughs> right? No, no. F- future Austin, don't play that back. Don't play that back. What are you doing? I'm playing it back, right? Hi everybody, welcome to Fun Size VO. <laughs> Oh, come on, man. Why Why you got to be like this? No one must know my secret. You've been Bobcat Goldthwait in disguise for the last 10 oh, years. Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, welcome to Bite Sized VO. It's called Fun Sized VO, you moron. I am your other host, Austin. And today, we're we're actually doing a, a two-parter question because these questions actually do kind of work hand in hand with each other. So, Austin, take it away. All right, so the first question comes from at, at SD the VA on Twitter, and they say, Hey, uh, hi. Um, any helpful tips and possible options for sound treatment for a VA working from home? Much thanks. And part two of this question comes from Ken Koi, at Ken Koi Fish on Twitter, and they say, What's the best way to describe reverb? I've seen projects where casting directors say they wouldn't consider your audition if you have reverb, but then I hear that reverb is good sometimes. Please help. I am confused with a flustered face. Before we go further into the discussion of reverb, for those of you who don't know, reverb is a fun term of, I don't know what the actual like definition term of it, but I guess the best example is like, have you ever been in a room with some very tough walls and you shout and your voice immediately bounces back to you? That's reverb. So, first off, the short answer to the second question I would like to say is post-production reverb is good. Yeah, reverb like this. So, and then I guess the short answer to the first question is um, like a room, but not when your shoulders are touching the walls. So here, here's the more detailed answer. Setting up a, a space. I'll talk about mine right now because I think this is actually working out really well. So mine is sort of a hexagonal setup with panels that I want to say are about six by four. So you take about six of those and you kind of put yourself in a hexagonal format and then you do like the proper like sound padding treatments that you can get. And then I also have some DIY panels that I've done that I actually shared, I think probably last year because it was great. It was basically just taking like old canvases and stuffing them with towels and then sealing it off. And they actually do a really good job of picking up some of the dead air in the room. Well, actually, it's pronounced hexagonal. (laughs) If somebody ever comes at you with well, actually, (laughs) throw them down a well, actually. Full honesty, I always get get comments on YouTube of me saying words wrong. So you know what? The curse lives on! (laughs) The curse lives on. No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm not actually that much of a douche. My my little area, I actually have a walk-in closet that I use, and I have put up four tension rods, and draped over those tension rods are heavy-duty moving blankets. I got four of them on Amazon for, like, 35 bucks, I think. Oh, that's good. And good lord, they are soundproof as fuck. Fuck. Um, I love these things so much. I love this recording space. I, I have like some pillows and stuff like that piled up in various areas of this room too to kind of add to the deafeningness of this area. And right now I have the door open because it's hot in here. So you might be able to hear the AC, but that's just because I have the door open because it's hot in here because I'm recording in my actual space. But I I used to just have an area where I, I put up some acoustic foam in a corner of my room Mm -hmm. and had some stuffed animals piled in the other end of the room. And that was, that got rid of maybe about 80% of the reverb. Occasionally though, there would be some times when I would say specifically A sounds and I think E sounds where occasionally you would hear A, uh, I, uh, E, you hear like a very, very brief, like a whiplash kind of a reverb. And that's the kind of reverb that people, when directors are talking about. Because if you hear a recording and it sounds like this, where you can kind of hear that there's a bit of room e- echo in the background, it doesn't sound very kosher. Kosher is actually the best way to describe it, in my opinion. Yeah, I used to have a metal light fixture in my room and you would hear it. <laughs> you would absolutely yes. hear it. 
I had to knock myself out of the closet uh, for my old closet setup just because I, I had a metal bar in there. That, yes, I heard it as soon as I said it, Austin. Tyler, your sex tape. Anyway, there was a metal bar in my closet that picked up on the vibrations as I was shouting. So couldn't do setups in there anymore. So now I have this thing, and this thing's much nicer. And eventually I want to um, actually have a whisper room made uh, in yes. my house so that I can actually like have like a proper studio area that even maybe some of my friends would be able to use. <clears throat> oh. oh, God, oh. That, that must have felt good. Oh, no, it didn't. <laughs> oh, no. On, this, on, the, on the opposite end of trying to avoid reverb, you also want to avoid over-cushioning your sound. And I oh, think the best yes. the best way I heard it is one of my clients says, I want you to make sure you sound like you're in a room, not in a coffin. Yeah, or in a shoebox, like yes. I had an issue with once. <laughs> uh, I'll share the story, because I've had oh, this happen. Because no. I did this, I did this, and I'm ashamed of it. Uh, one of my older Newgrounds days, um, recording for a thing, uh, I was in college at the time, and I didn't have a car, and my dorm was very echoey. So I'm like, what do I do? I got not only my blankets, but the supposed bed for a roommate that I never got, so I shared a double for myself for that semester, took those blankets and used that. In my opinion at the time, because I was only two years into this, and I thought, oh, this sounds good. No, I went back recently and listened to them, and oh my God, I actually do sound like I'm in a coffin. It's so cushiony. It is gross. And I, I will say, as someone who has been in a coffin before, uh, yeah, it sounds weird. I was about to say, rest in peace, Austin Lee Matthews. You died as you lived. <laughs> died as he lived, full of anxiety about death. Oops. <laughs> well. <laughs> but yeah, so... So there, there's your main factors. You don't want to have massive reverbering just because it sounds terrible and because sounds a vibration and it's going to pick up everything. But you don't, also don't want to overly cushion yourself because then the sound has nowhere to go. So that's bad. But in, in post-production, you can do reverb and there's a lot of fun things you can do with it. But uh, if you don't, I'll be honest, if you don't have any experience in doing post-production, leave it to the guys who are going to do it for you. Yeah, rule of thumb, rule of thumb. If they don't tell you to add effects to the voice, if they don't tell you to mix your final files when you send them, don't. I mix my files for certain clients, but that's because I know they want them mixed. If you don't know how to mix audio... And if the director says nothing about mixing or adding any special effects, just don't do it. Be like the sushi chef you want to be and just serve it raw. <laughs> Why do I always do cooking analogies? Because you're a fucking chef. I was. Not anymore. Because you were a fucking chef. <laughs> PM Seymour, voice actor. His tagline, he was a fucking chef. I hope you all enjoyed this episode where we talked about bad reverb and being in coffins and saying, uh, serve it raw. And, um, if you like what you heard and you would have some questions you'd like for us to answer, hit us up on Twitter with the hashtag fun size VO. And if you're an actor and you would like to contribute your thoughts and opinions about the questions, hit us up in the comments below. And Austin, what would you like to say? Ring that bell! There it is. Ring that bell. 2018. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you ring that bell, we'll pin ya. <laughs> what are we? A morning radio show on your commute to work? What would be our what would be our morning radio drive through show? <gasps> PM in the tracks. <laughs> no. Well, welcome to PMS and Tampax. It's time for the Melody Radio Show. PMS and Tampax. We make your ears bleed. Oh, God. PMS and Tampax. PMS and Tampax. Oh, my God. Oh, God, my stomach hurts. I don't, I want that, but I also don't want that to be a show. <laughs> Are people still listening? I hope not. Oh, God. 
please, please go to work and have fun. <laughs>